I've got to say, the first time I saw that portrait, I was just in awe, really. He caught a moment that's sort of not, I guess, what people would think necessarily as a you know, former dancer and a, you know, artistic director, because we tend to be on. And it was sort of more of a pensive moment, and I really liked that, because you know, I feel like it's the side of me that sometimes people don't get to see. I guess I've done a lot of portrait photographs in my life. Peter was amazing because he made it so comfortable. Like I didn't feel like, I didn't even really notice that he was taking the photos. We were just talking and it was a very, um, almost felt like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a photo session, except for the fact that I had really good makeup on and someone had done my hair really nicely. So, and I think what was really nice is because I was involved a little bit in um, helping them make the shapes. I mean, we did lots and lots and lots of moving um, photographs to make the, the piece around me. And so I was sort of involved in that because I couldn't help myself but go, why don't you try this? And why don't you throw that leg up? And yeah, so that was sort of fun. I was one of those weird kids that just always wanted to dance. And my family, you know, are fantastic, they're wonderful people. Mum and dad, dad was an accountant, mum was, you know, my mum. And I have brothers and sisters that there's no artistic sort of dance background in our family at all. So I was this sort of mutant child who, you know, used to dance around the house all the time. And I used to dance in front of the TV when the TV was off so I could see myself, you know, moving around. I didn't really have a plan B. I, I started training when I was seven. I saw some ballet on TV, which was Rudolf Nureyev doing Don Quixote with the Australian Ballet. And I went, oh, that's the sort of dance I want to do. It's not until you step off the stage that you realise how amazing it is, because, you know, the curtain goes up. And even if you feel like you haven't done your best, you there is this sense of great appreciation and it really humbles you that you know people can react to you in that way. We have such a privilege to do what we do and then to have the extra um, acknowledgement I guess of an audience to you know to be so generous with their response is quite amazing. So it is something that you never forget and it's addictive I've got to say. It's something that you sort of miss when you stop dancing you know. I, I, when I finish my day at you know at the office now and you know get up from my desk you know there's no one applauding anymore. It's like but I, I feel lucky that I had that experience. I had a number of career ending injuries which luckily I managed to get through. Uh, when I was 26 I blew a disc in my back and after nine months of really slow rehab and therapy and getting myself back into dancing again, I danced for another 11 years. So it was an extraordinary experience. And then the next time I had a big period like that was when I tore my cruciate ligament in my left knee. I think those injuries really taught me a lot about myself and my endurance and, and I guess my passion for dancing. But it also set up the career that I now have. So when I was off, I would do things around the ballet company. I'd go to sponsorship functions and patrons functions and um, be around the administration. So it sort of began my passion, I guess, for the other side of the organisation, the non-performance side. And now as artistic director, I think I did my apprenticeship through those injuries. Kids love to dance. You know, you go to a pre-primary class and you put music on and they all start dancing and then somehow through our you know school age and teenagers we sort of lose that you know we're told to sit down and not move and and anyone that just spontaneously dances it's sort of seen as being a bit you know weird but I, I think anything that brings dance out of people is really fantastic and I, I love that. When you go and see a performance, it's not just what the artists do on stage, it's how you interpret it. So it's interactive and it's, it can be very seductive and it's very physical, but it's also very emotional and I think quite visceral that you actually have this, this opportunity to see people without words telling complex stories.